So even though the biggest astronomical event of 2024 is I guess the solar eclipse on April 8th of 2024, at least that's the one that everyone is talking about, technically, for astronomers, it's not that at all. It's actually the event we're going to be discussing today, and it's a recurring event that happens every 80 years. And so basically in 2024, we get two separate opportunities to observe something that we usually don't get to see. Obviously the solar eclipse, but also what's known as a recurrent nova. And so, a wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss this astronomical event that actually might have already happened when you're watching this video, or it might have not. We don't actually know the exact date yet, but it's happening really, really soon. Or so the scientists think. But first, let's actually talk about what it is and how all of this works. And it all starts with white dwarfs. These very unusual objects we're going to be discussing again in the video very soon, because something really important was discovered about them, but also a type of an object that the Sun is going to become as well. This is what's known as a stellar remnant. In some sense, the core of the star itself, that becomes extremely dense and collapses on itself, but is unable to produce a neutron star or a black hole because it just doesn't have enough mass. But it does have enough mass to form what's known as electron degenerate matter on the inside that's able to prevent further collapse. In other words, it's actually been compared to a kind of an ocean of electrons that because of various quantum effects, such as the inability of electrons to be in the same place, prevents the object from growing smaller and maintains the overall size and shape. And most of the stars in the galaxy, including our Sun, are going to become one of these. And they're actually going to stay this way for billions and billions of years. White dwarfs tend to stay this way and don't change much over a very long period of time. But the thing is, about half of the stars in the galaxy are binary. And that means that sometimes you'll actually get two stars growing older at different times. One might have already become a white dwarf and one is still in its red giant stage. And if these two stars orbit close enough, they actually tend to interact, producing very specific, very unique effects. One might have already become a white dwarf but the other one is still going through its red giant stage. And so here, as the red giant starts to expand and starts to basically become larger and larger, sometimes its outer layers start to interact with the white dwarf. And in those cases, white dwarfs will actually start absorbing a lot of this mass and essentially create an accretion disk around themselves, forming something similar to what you see right here. And in those cases, when these accretion disks become thick enough or actually acquire just enough mass, they reach a kind of an instability period where at some point within just weeks or sometimes months, they reach a point of a nuclear detonation. Literally, a massive nuclear bomb explodes around the white dwarf as most of the accretion disk suddenly turns into energy. And in essence, this is what we call nova. Not supernova, just nova. It's called that because back in the days, from a distance, it looked like some kind of a new star. And nova means new. And this is basically what we're going to be observing sometimes in 2024. But the thing is, I've actually discussed this particular prediction almost like a decade ago, I think. Possibly in 2016. This is when originally some of the initial predictions started to be made. And so back then, researchers actually realized something unusual about a system known as T Corona Borealis. A system that we already knew was actually a nova previously, possibly at least twice. The most well-known eruption was back in 1946, and it was obviously studied and observed by a lot of different astronomers, but originally this particular star was found back in 1866, 80 years prior, because of its previous eruption, and because normally you're not actually going to be able to see this star without at least binoculars or a small telescope. But in 1866 and 1946, suddenly we had a new star. We had a nova, with this lasting for just under one week. And this was a pretty bright star. It suddenly became one of the hundred brightest stars in the night skies. Technically, when it happens again, it's even going to be visible in a typical city. Here, light pollution is not going to hide it. And so several studies from years ago essentially analyzed the active state in 2015 and 2016, realizing something really strange. Here, the star suddenly became a little bit brighter, a little bit more active, produced more radio light, produced more x-rays, with the overall increase in production extremely similar to what happened in 1938, 
basically eight years before the 1946 eruption. Moreover, additional observations and additional studies from just a few years ago revealed an unusual dip or unusual dimming event sometime in June of 2018, and then a much larger dip in March of 2023, basically last year. And this was extremely similar to a very sudden dip in 1945. As you can see here, it was May to June 1945. And literally 9 to 10 months later, we suddenly had this very large, very explosive event. As a result, that particular paper predicted that this NOVA will probably happen in January of 2024. Well, it didn't, but I think it's more of a it didn't yet. In the past, a lot of predictions of various NOVA usually involved large timeline errors. And so in this case, it's probably going to be at least plus minus 7 months. Now, because this particular star is approximately 3,000 light years away from us, being able to suddenly see it with a naked eye is already pretty impressive. But what's even more impressive is actually if you compare this to other NOVA and specifically other recurrent NOVA. Here's a very short list, there's basically like a dozen or so, and most of them are really well known, and moreover, pretty much for most of them, the predictions so far have been relatively accurate. The most recent one was just over a year ago, and it was a recurrent nova in U Scorpii. Here the peak magnitude was approximately 8. Then, just a year prior to this, we had an eruption from a very famous nova, RS Ophiokai, and this one is known to have happened many, many times. But here the brightest it's ever been was magnitude of 5. Sort of visible with the naked eye, but kind of difficult. This though, the nova that's about to happen, is going to be 2.5 magnitude. And if you know anything about magnitudes, that's pretty bright. It's extremely close to the famous North Star or Polaris, meaning that it's going to be extremely easily visible. Not as easily visible as Sirius, which is a little bit brighter, and actually does contain its own white dwarf right there, but definitely bright enough to be visible from a typical city. And moreover, once again, this is one of those once-in-a-lifetime events. It seems to happen every 80 years. And intriguingly, one of the scientists wanted to find out if the period is really 80 years or not. And so Bradley Sheffer essentially went through various historical records looking for signs of unusual stars in this region. And he did find writings from Reverend Francis Wollaston, who back in 1789 reported an unusual star appearing for a few days in the location of Corona Borealis, pretty much exactly where we expect this nova to happen. Likewise, 6th century before this, in 1217, there was an eyewitness report by Abbot Burchard of Habsburg of some kind of a stellar source that suddenly produced a lot of light and lasted for many days. Back then he saw this as a wonderful sign. Today we also see it as a wonderful sign, but for a very different, wonderful reason. Scientific reason. It basically reminds us that modern science is super correct and helps us predict events we knew nothing about just a few hundred years ago. And so I guess the question is, okay, so when exactly is it going to happen? Since we only have a few days to observe it, how do we make sure we don't miss it? Well, right now the prediction is set for April plus minus 3 months. So basically, April, May, June, July, maybe August, maybe September. And so by September of 2024, we should see something. The NOVA should have already happened, because right now the observations are very similar to various pre-NOVA events in 1946. And just to make this a little bit more interesting, let's turn it into a game. Try to predict it. Leave a comment below with some kind of a date, essentially starting today, up until I guess any time in the future, when you think this might happen. And if one of you wonderful prophets succeeds in guessing the actual day of the Nova, oh, there might be a surprise or present or something. I didn't really plan this one yet. But I don't know, you might get something, possibly a t-shirt, possibly something else. I'll think about it. But anyway, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna go with a date that's kind of important for me personally. September 27th. I'll explain why a bit later. So yeah, as long as you predict this before it happens, not on the day and not after, I'll consider you a winner. And if a bunch of you predict the same date, I guess you're all winners, kind of. Anyway, either way, when this happens, it's going to be very important for the scientific community. Being able to observe these events in real time and studying what happens to these stars, the red giant and the white dwarf, which are the same two stages our sun is going to go through as well, will probably teach us a little bit more about what happens to these stars and what might happen to the sun as well. And in case of this particular system, it already has a few mysteries. For example, for some reason there seems to be an unusual lack of oxygen inside the red giant. Currently it's unknown why. On top of this, the scientists want to understand 
why there are so few of these recurrent nova out there. Now, previous research suggested that all nova are recurrent, they just have very different periods. Some of them happen every few years, some of them might happen every few centuries. So we basically don't live long enough to see any of them. Nevertheless, because there are only like a dozen so far known to us in the galaxy, that by itself is a really small number. And that of course highlights how exceptionally rare this particular event is. Way more rare than the solar eclipse and way more rare than anything else we'll see in the next few decades. Okay, except for maybe certain comets. But most comets are pretty common. And so basically, in the next few months, we'll be hearing more about this binary system, 3000 light years away from us, with two stars orbiting each other every 228 days. In case you're wondering, the distance between them is approximately half as much as the distance of Earth from the Sun. But because the transfer of material is about to reach its peak, which is probably why we're seeing these unusual dips, it means that the explosion itself is pretty much imminent. It's definitely going to happen any time now. And the reason I'm saying this with so much confidence is because previous predictions from, for example, Scorpii were also spot on as well. This was predicted years ahead and it happened within just a few months of the predicted date. Same thing for this particular nova and for many others. But because this is going to be the brightest event ever, possibly the brightest one we're going to see for at least another century, that's why it deserves its own video. In terms of science and astronomy, this is going to be much, much bigger than the solar eclipse. And so once it does happen, we'll come back and talk more about actual discoveries. And if one of you guesses the date, we'll probably talk about the winner and the prize. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.